Try to become a connoisseur of your breathing, a connoisseur of the breath energy and the body as a whole. Focus on one spot in the body and see what you can do to make that spot feel really good. The depth of the, br the breathing, the length of the breath, the quality it can be heavy or light. All kinds of ways that you can play with the energy of the breathing process and see that, how that has an effect on the spot that you've chosen in the body. Try to choose a spot that's especially sensitive to changes in the energy. It's usually down the meridian at the front of the body. It could be the forehead, the area right between the eyes, the palate, your throat, the middle of the chest the tip of the sternum, that little bone that sticks out right in the middle of the where the ribs come together, around your stomach and your abdomen. Choose a spot that's sensitive to the changes of the energy in your body and see what you can do to make that spot feel good all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And you're the one who gets to define what feels good. There's no outside standard here. What feels good right now? The more sensitive you are to this part of your awareness, the more it can help in the practice. The purpose here is not to become an expert breather, but it's one of the tools or one of the skills you need along the way. To become an expert in learning how not to cause suffering. As in the Buddha's analysis, suffering comes from ignorance, and then ignorance leads to what he calls fabrication. The Pali word is sankara. And fabrication covers lots of things. It covers the breath. It covers the way you talk to yourself in your mind, the things you focus on and the comments and evaluations you make about them. And then your basic perceptions, the labels you put on things and the feelings that come as a result. All of these things have an effect in shaping your mental state, your physical state. And the mental state and physical state are very closely connected. You'll see this as the breath gets more and more comfortable, that the mind begins to relax. It feels better here in the present moment, a sense of ease. Sometimes when the breath is really good, it feels like the body's glowing. It's not a visual glow, but just a sense of everything radiant in the body. It feels like a good place to be, and that has an effect on the mind. The mind's more willing to settle down and stay here because it feels really good deep down inside. So that shows you the influence. That Simply the change in the breath can have on the mind. Of course, the mind can also affect the breath. You notice this, especially when fear comes in, or anger comes in, or any sudden unpleasant emotion. It's going to affect your breathing. And sometimes that turns into a vicious cycle. The breathing gets uncomfortable, and that aggravates the fear or the anger. You get all worked up. So what you're doing as you're meditating is you're learning how to take those unskillful states apart, or take the building blocks of your mental states and learning how to put them together in a good way. So your breathing is comfortable, and you focus on the breath as your topic, and then you learn how to evaluate it in such a way that makes it feel comfortable. You learn to label all the different sensations in the body as they relate to the breath. Your awareness of your hand, how is that affected by the breath? Your awareness of your arms, how is that affected? Once the breath starts feeling good in your chosen spot, you can start roaming around the rest of the body, investigating how the different parts of the body feel as the breath gets more and more comfortable. 
And as you can include them in this new comfortable range of sensation, and this way you get more acquainted with the building blocks. Then when you catch yourself putting together an unskillful mental state or an unskillful emotion or an unpleasant emotion, you have a handle on how to deal with it. You don't have to just sit there and watch it, because the emotion is not a ready-made thing. You're contributing to it in the present moment, sometimes simply by the way you breathe, by the way you think about the issue, the way you label the various components in the issue how you evaluate what's going on. These are the basic building blocks of our emotions. And so skill in creating concentration gives you skill in how to deal with the basic building blocks. So when you sense that there's an unskillful emotion, you've got a way to take it apart. And you take it apart in impersonal terms. Learn to see the I the sense of me in there, in that emotion, simply as a perception. It's a label you put on things. And then ask yourself, exactly what am I labeling? Where is the me in here? Well, there's just breath and thoughts and feelings, perceptions. That's all you can perceive right here. So look at it in those terms rather, in, rather than in all the connotations and all the narratives that tend to build around the I and the other person who may be involved in the situation that's given rise to the emotion. Just learn to observe these states in terms of their basic building blocks. And that gives you a handle on them. You can step back from the situation a bit. Take note of how you're breathing. What are you focusing on? What are the, how are you evaluating? What standards are you using to evaluate the situation? How are you perceiving the situation? How do you label the different actors in the situation? Where are the feelings of pleasure and pain? And then ask yourself, can I put these building blocks together in a better way? And that way you're not the victim of the unpleasant feeling. You gain a better and better sense of how you are the creator of these things. Some of the building blocks are things that have come from your past karma, and you can't change them that much. But it turns out your past karma is not just one thing. There are lots of karmic seeds in your background, and you have the ability to choose which ones you're going to draw on. If you draw on your old habits, like the man I mentioned this afternoon who was manic depressive, and every time a certain sensation came up in his stomach. He knew oh, the depression was going to come on. He was trying to fight it, and he had this old habitual way of dealing with that particular sensation, trying to push it out of his body. And when you've got one part of your energy field pushing another part of your energy field or trying to push it out, what happens is you wear everything out, and everything just seemed to snowball and got out of control. But when he was able to notice that reaction and realize that he had a different choice, he didn't have to push that sensation out. He could think of it diffusing throughout the body, and as it diffused, it lost its strength. And he realized that he had a new way of dealing with those sensations, those potentials. He was drawing on some memories, and he was drawing on some new skills in breathing. In other words, these basic building blocks of mental states. And he created something totally different. So even though our, our karma may be such that certain bad things are happening outside, we've got some good potentials inside. Focus on those. See what you can make with them. And as we're sitting here where it's quiet, you get some practice in making good things out of the breath, out of feelings and perceptions and thoughts. A good, strong state of concentration, a steady state of mind. And it starts with this sensitivity to the breath, learning to be a connoisseur, how good breathing really feels and how it can get really satisfying. Which part of your body feels starved of breath energy? Where is the most sensitive area in your body with regard to energy? Around your heart? In your throat? Where? You can check for yourself. 
and then allow that part to be massaged by the breath or whatever it wants from the breathing. That way you get to see how satisfying the breath can really be. And how we've got a really good potential here if you learn how to use it skillfully. This becomes your tool so that when unpleasant emotions arise, well, you've got a handle on them. You don't have to be their victim. You don't have to just sit there patiently and watching them. This idea that mindfulness means being totally passive in the face of whatever comes up, it's a huge misunderstanding. And the Buddha's analysis of the five aggregates, the different things that we can draw on to create our sense of who we are and what we're experiencing. He says we don't really experience them fully without some element of intention, present intention, the intentions we have right now. In other words, there are potentials here that we draw on to create a feeling. We create it for the sake of having a feeling or a perception or a fabrication having a sense of the form of the body or any kind of form. Even sensory consciousness contains an element of intention. So we learn how to take advantage of that fact. And mindfulness simply means keeping in mind all the various skills you can bring to whatever's arising. And then you use your discernment to figure out what is the best use can make of the potentials of the present. So try to sensitize yourself to these different elements. The breath is the physical side, and the direct of thought and evaluation, those are factors of the first jhana. That's what you use to make the breath more comfortable, by staying focused on it and then learning how to evaluate it. And when it's, you've got a good breath, learning how to make use of that good breath learning how to adjust things and see what works to create a good sense of satisfying pleasure in the present. And your perceptions and feelings, all these elements are gathered here together. As you get more skilled to the breath, you begin to see these particular mental functions more clearly, get a clear handle on them, how good they can be. And you want to remember that so when unskillful things come up, Unpleasant sensations come up, unpleasant emotions come up. You can remember the skillful way you dealt with the building blocks. So you can take the emotion apart, not identify with it, just see, okay, this is something that's happening. But it doesn't have to happen that way. You can undo it and reconfigure the building blocks. This is how you convert all the different parts of the mind and the body into a path, a path that leads you to a happiness that lies beyond the mind and the body. But you need these things to get there. So learn to use them skillfully.